Have you ever wondered why you struggle with self-esteem, especially in relationships? It might have something to do with your attachment style. If you're wondering how these two things are connected, you've come to the right place, because that's the topic of this video. By the way, I'm Kaylee Larkin. I help individuals who are frustrated and ready to give up on love to attract romantic relationships with more ease, trust, and deep connection. In this video, we'll do a quick overview of the four attachment styles that people have in relationships and about each attachment style's self-esteem. By the end of this video, you'll hopefully learn some new things about yourself and some steps you can take to boost your self-esteem if that's your goal. We'll talk about the ways that these styles develop and how that affects your self-perception as an adult. So remember, there are four attachment styles. If you want an in-depth review, check out the video above to learn about each of these styles and how they impact your relationships. In the secure attachment style, people tend to have a strong sense of self-worth and confidence. They're comfortable giving and receiving support, they trust themselves, and they're skilled at expressing their needs and helping others meet their needs. In the anxious attachment style, people seek out relationships with a lot of closeness, expressions of love, intimacy. They tend to focus on whether the relationship is stable or not, and sometimes this focus can lead to relational instability. They get attachment discomfort when their partner moves away from them relationally. Their self-esteem fluctuates, so they may be more dependent on their partners for validation. In the avoidant attachment style, people are more comfortable with independence and self-reliance in their relationships. In contrast to the anxious style, their attachment discomfort comes up when their partner moves towards them relationally. Their self-esteem can appear to be high but is masking insecurities. And finally, in the disorganized attachment style, people want connection, but they fear being vulnerable. So this can lead to relational unpredictability they tend to have low self-esteem. Please understand that people typically have one primary style and more than one attachment style overall. So those are the four attachment styles. Secure tends to have high self-esteem. Anxious tends to have variable self-esteem. Avoidant appears to have high self-esteem but masks insecurities. And disorganized tends to have low self-esteem. Remember that personal growth is a thing. These are changeable and we'll go into each of these styles a little more detail later on. It's important to understand that we're all unique and there's other factors that play into self-esteem besides attachment, such as culture, personal success, genetics, body image, physical health, education, and more. But first, let's talk about how the attachment styles develop. Attachment styles are adaptations to our environment when we're young. They can continue to change throughout life based on our relationships, our life events, and the conscious work that we do on them. Secure attachment develops when a caregiver is consistently responsive to what the child needs, giving them comfort, attention, and safety. And this helps the child develop trust and a positive view of themselves and of other people. Anxious attachment develops when the caregiver is inconsistently responsive. Sometimes the child gets their needs met right away. Sometimes the caregiver is preoccupied themselves or busy. And so this inconsistency creates anxiety for the child so they become preoccupied with seeking that reassurance and validation. Avoidant attachment, on the other hand, develops when caregivers are unavailable, dismissive, or neglectful. So the child learns to suppress their need for closeness and connection. They become self-reliant and distant in relationships. Disorganized attachment develops when caregivers are highly inconsistent or unpredictable. So the child is confused or afraid. The caregiver might be a source of stress instead of comfort, and this is very confusing to the attachment system. So what's the result of these different scenarios in childhood on adult self-esteem and relationships? Let's go back to how attachment style plays out in each of these four styles' relationships. In the secure style, because the person is accustomed to getting their needs met with someone else, they've been given a really good role model on how to help other people meet their needs. And this makes them team players. They're thinking of relationships as a two-person system rather than a one-person system. 
like a team, where they're rooting for their partner as well as themselves. They also internalize the idea that they're deserving of love and care, so they have a strong sense of self-worth. While self-esteem can be derived from other people, our sense of self-worth comes from ourselves. So secure people have essentially taken that love in from a parent, and then they've internalized it. And they have a positive view of others as well. They're able to engage in healthy interdependence where people are depending on each other to get needs met. And they don't solely rely on someone else. They don't expect themselves to be 100% self-reliant. Their worldview is essentially that we all help each other and it's a beautiful network and that's just fine. And guess what? Because they have a positive self-view, they're not overly reliant on their partner to feel good about themselves, which means they can communicate their needs openly while also being attuned to a partner's needs. And because they're not worried that their partner is going to abandon them if they share a need, and they're not worried that their partner is going to suffocate them if their partner shares a need, So instead, this leads to a lot of mutual trust and relational stability and security. Now, in the anxious style, remember that people didn't have that consistent care that they needed to trust the relationship was okay. When the caregiver was sometimes available, sometimes not available, what the child learned was their needs might not always be met. And so this created kind of a deep-seated anxiety and reliance on external validation to feel worthy and loved. And that's why in the anxious attachment style, people can have a self-esteem that's highly dependent on approval and attention from other people. It can really fluctuate a lot. So in relationships, this shows up as a preoccupation with their partner's feelings and behaviors. They might focus on looking for signs of rejection or abandonment, which makes them ask for reassurance or become dependent or overly attentive. Their fear of not being enough can make them prioritize their partner's needs over their own, often to the point where they neglect their own needs. And this can make for an imbalanced dynamic, as you might imagine, where the anxious person in the relationship is struggling to express their needs because they're afraid of rejection or abandonment from their partner. And then that causes them to feel resentful or dissatisfied. Their self-worth is based on the state of the relationship. So they're vulnerable to these cycles of anxiety and insecurity. So let's talk about how you can boost your self-esteem if you have anxious attachment style. First, lean into self-compassion. Practice speaking kindly to yourself, like someone would talk to a friend who's going through a hard time. If you catch yourself being mean to yourself, just stop, say something encouraging and empathetic, and you can practice doing this on your own if you're used to turning to a partner to tell you something encouraging, which is also fine, right? I want to clarify that there's nothing wrong with asking for some validation from other people. If you didn't get it growing up, it can feel great. You just don't want to be completely reliant on other people for your self-esteem. Second, challenge your negative beliefs. If you have a belief that you're unworthy of love, that can really hurt your self-esteem. So find an affirmation that's more realistic and positive to repeat. Working with the subconscious can be a valuable way of challenging negative beliefs and developing beliefs that help you meet your goals. I have found hypnosis to be a powerful way of shifting beliefs to be more positive and affirming. Third, set boundaries. This might be recognizing what your needs are in relationship and learning how to express them. Setting boundaries helps you to assert your worth and prevents over-depending on others for your self-esteem. I've worked with many people who wanted to get more clarity around their needs and how to communicate them. And one client, for example, told me that the work helped them to increase their self-esteem and speak up for their needs in a way that didn't involve blaming their partner. I have a course for boundaries for anxious attachment style that you can find at kayleelarkin.com. So those are a few ideas for the anxious attachment style to boost self-esteem. Next, let's talk about the avoidant style and self-esteem. So remember, in the avoidant style, someone didn't get the attention, care, or time that a child really ought to get. A caregiver might have been emotionally unavailable or dismissive. And so that means that they ended up relying heavily on themselves, as well as just suppressing some of those needs like care and attention. 
So think about it. It's a smart adaptation for a kid who's trying to navigate the world. And that's why folks with the avoidance style might base their self-esteem on their independence or ability to handle things on their own. Vulnerability might feel too much like a way to get rejected or hurt. In relationships, this outwardly high self-esteem might manifest as emotional distance or autonomy. They might even be proud of their ability not to need other people, which can make it hard to form deep, intimate relationships. And the self-reliance can be a strength, but it creates challenges in relationships because they feel uncomfortable being vulnerable or depending on other people and this giving and mutual support. And so these things tend to build self-esteem. When we're vulnerable to someone and they recognize us and they give us positive attention for who we are over time, avoiding emotional intimacy, that can lead to isolation, lower self-worth. So it's worth looking into how to get more comfortable with vulnerability and perhaps building some positive experiences with being vulnerable. So let's talk about three ways that you can boost your self-esteem if you have avoidant attachment. So first, lean into self-compassion. Just like with the anxious style, this is so important because this self-compassion counteracts shame and it makes people feel more positive about their experience. So give yourself some self-compassion where you struggle with vulnerability or closeness. And this helps manage stress. It increases your positive self-view so you can build that self-esteem from within. Second, acknowledge and embrace vulnerability. I know that could sound scary, but first I want to say that vulnerability is a strength, not a weakness. You can start small with people that you know who you don't think will reject you and just open up in small ways. Maybe ask them for their opinion or a small favor. And this helps because over time you can notice that emotional openness, it doesn't diminish your independence. Instead, it creates deeper connections where you're being valued for more than simply your self-reliance. And you might be thinking, well, that's all well and good for friendships, but what about a long-term relationship? Wouldn't I lose independence? And to that, I'd say you're not losing independence so much as integrating it into a supportive partnership. And you can create a partnership where people respect each other's autonomy while also being there for each other. When partners are interdependent, not independent or dependent, but interdependent, they keep their autonomy, but they also support each other's personal growth and well being. So, this brings me to a third way that the avoidance style can boost self esteem, and that's to challenge negative beliefs about dependency. We all need the support of other people, it's part of what makes us human, it's a normal and healthy part of life. And now let's move on to disorganized attachment and self-esteem. So remember that in the disorganized attachment style, people have a low and unstable self-esteem and they received unpredictable and inattentive care during childhood. The caregiver might have been a source of confusion or fear. There may have been a source of comfort. But either way, it's confusing because we expect an attachment figure to be comforting and safe. And so this inconsistency gives people with disorganized style a deep sense of unworthiness and distrust because they learn their environment is unpredictable, they're not getting their needs met consistently, and then there's the problem in relationships. This lack of stable self-worth can mean chaotic and contradictory behaviors. They both seek closeness and they're afraid of it because of that history of having that attachment figure who's also scary or chaotic. So partners can find this confusing, and this adds to the person's expectation of rejection or betrayal. And this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy if they sabotage relationships out of fear. For example, they might preemptively sabotage relationships to avoid the pain they anticipate. So they find it hard to trust themselves or other people. Their low self-esteem contributes to a lack of trust. They might question their partner's commitment or their own worthiness of being loved. So let's talk about how the disorganized style can boost their self-esteem. So first, it can be especially helpful to get support working through and letting go of emotions from negative life experiences. Somatic-based modalities can be helpful because of the way that trauma is stored in the body. Second, that self-compassion is once again super helpful for the disorganized style because self-esteem and self-critical thoughts typically go hand in hand. So self-compassion meditation, writing compassionate letters to yourself, that can be one way to remember 
how to treat yourself with kindness. And as you talk more kindly to yourself, you will start to see yourself in a more positive light. Third, practicing emotional regulation, such as mindfulness, breathing exercise, self-hypnosis, grounding techniques. These can all help you to feel more calm and grounded. Having better emotional regulation leads to more relational stability, and that boosts your self-esteem because it reduces the chaos and unpredictability that can go along with that style. So we've talked about some different ways that attachment style and self-esteem are connected and ways to boost self-esteem for the different styles. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe to be notified of new videos on attachment style and relationships. You might also be interested in checking out my range of courses and videos at kayleelarkin.com. There's a secure attachment rewire course, a mini course on feeling safe in love, a course on boundaries, a whole bunch of guided meditations, and a blog with tons of free resources. And you can also join my mailing list to stay connected and get the latest tips and discounts on courses as they come out. Please share this video with anyone who you think might like it. You never know who you're going to help. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. This is Kaylee Larkin wishing you a beautiful relational journey.